thank you for joining us today. I'm Megan Ritchie from High Drive, and this is Carly Ainsley with Her Dog Sick YYC. Today we thought we'd walk you through some of the enrichment toys we have available and some boredom busters, as well as a few do-it-yourself options to get your dog started. Uh, Carly, would you like to walk us through some of the Kong-type toys? Stuff the sure. Toys? So we have a couple options here for Kongs. Uh, the different colors indicate different strengths of the rubber. The purple is for, it's a softer rubber. Uh, it is for small dogs, senior dogs, or young puppies. Then we have the red, so this red and this one. Uh, this is for the average dog. Uh, and then the black ones are the strongest in the calm line. They are good for dogs with really strong jaws who are overly powerful. They're good for bully breeds. Yep. And we don't have any today here with us today, but there are puppy ones available mm -hmm. and senior ones available. So if you buy a puppy one, you would probably move into a red comb if they don't destroy the puppy one. Yes. And then if they mm -hmm. wreck a red one, you'd move up to the extreme or yes. judge by breed. So I would kind of judge by breed or by how destructive they are in general. <laughs> in general. <laughs> so if your dog is ruining their toys at home, or if you have a one of these other types of toys that we'll get to later, if they're ruining those, maybe just go up to the black. I personally, I have a bully breed dog and a larger breed dog. So I go for black just to be safe. They are a bit more on the expensive side, but overall, I think the value you know, you know they're going to last as well yeah. as anything. There's nothing better exactly. available. Um, so each of these different types of stuffable Kongs, or stuffable products, because that's not a Kong, they are used for different things. So the original Kong, they're really good to stuff with wet canned food. Yeah. Or I have stuffed it with raw, yeah. um, like ground beef or something. Yeah. You can put yogurts or cream cheese, cheese whiz, you yeah. can be creative with it. Yeah. These are really nice because you can put almost anything that you can think of. Be creative. And freeze it so you can make it as hard or as easy as you want. Yeah, when so, starting or... so depending on what the situation's for, you can stuff it with cream cheese or peanut butter and give it to your dog directly. Or if your dog is chewing it and getting all the food out really quickly, yeah. you might want and we will to have some recipes available on our website um, and maybe in the link below uh, this video. So you can look at a few different recipe options with different difficulty uh, levels. Excellent. And then we have these other chews. So these ones are not really suitable for stuffing. I'm sure you could, but they don't do the same. More intended for treats and kibble and that sort yeah. of thing. So these ones would be good for large kibbles. This one has a larger end than, say, this one. Yeah. Um, this would be good for like small kibble or dried kibble or dried treats like these yeah. over here. Um, I wouldn't put anything wet. Or no. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be pretty difficult to get out of little holes, and it's yeah. going to be hard to see on the video. But there are little tongs in there um, that you can. Um, sorry, this is a barnacle dude, um, and you can cut the tongs as little or big as you want to make it harder or easier. So if you have, yeah, little treats like these, um, you can make it whatever mm -hmm. size you need so they come out. But these holes are pretty tiny, even a small dog. Well, here is gonna have a hard time getting anything out of that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Okay. Um, so I guess one more thing before we move on. These are really good for feeding meals in. Um, they're a quick way to give a dog a meal and you can put them in the kennel or whatever. And, and I guess what I've seen most recommended is like new puppy, you're leaving them, mm -hmm. you know, for the house for the first time in the morning. You stuff their whole breakfast in there, yeah. give it to them in their kennel. Yeah, so these would be really good for if you're leaving. So yeah. like you said, uh, to help prevent separation anxiety. Right. You would throw some treats or peanut butter or whatever in here, put it in the dog's kennel, and then you can leave. Yeah. They're also good for dogs if you have company coming over, you can put whatever in, put your dog in the kennel, and they're preoccupied yep. while you yep. have somebody the there. The excitement of everyone taking their shoes off. Yeah. <laughs> so Finding a seat without the dogs <laughs> stealing the couch. Exactly. <laughs> so that's kind okay. of the benefits of these. So from there, we move to 
some of our kind of rollable toys. Yeah, that so we'll take. So these toys over here, <laughs> um, these are more motion toys. Right. So these are good for if it's cold out yep. to get your dog moving around indoors. Yeah. Um, and as a total aside, I used this when my when I first got my puppy test. Um, if I was cooking dinner and couldn't watch her when she was young and destroyed everything, these were a really great way to yeah. give me 15 minutes to defrost dinner. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. So this side, I guess, these you put, you drop in the toys, or drop in the treats, yeah. and then these ones over here are kind of nice because they twist. This also goes over here. So they twist off. So like this Kong wobbler, you can open it right up, put your food in here. anything in any kind of situation. Yeah. <laughs> it can be extremely distracting, dogs everywhere, people everywhere, and she'll take kibble. Uh, my Ozzy, he's down here, he's a little more difficult. So I can give him, maybe some of these will work in a situation like that, but yeah, it all depends on your dog. So yeah. if your dog's super food motivated, try with kibble or put kibble and some treats together. If they are not overly food motivated or they're lazy, like my Aussie, uh, maybe start with treats just to get them understanding how to use the toys. Yeah, perfect. So I'm gonna put you down. <laughs> so then we have some of these other ones don't twist off, so you're just yeah. gonna pour your kibble or treats mm -hmm. in there. And same with this one. Yeah, so for these you, you just use? put your toys or your treats or kibble in. Uh, they do not twist, so use smaller kibbles. I wouldn't yeah. use anything large right. because if your dog can't get it out, they're stuck in there for all time. Yeah, and they might get discouraged on using the treats. So yeah. you want to make sure that the rate of kibble or treats that are coming <laughs> out, you want to make sure that the rate of treats or kibble that are coming out is high enough to keep your dog engaged with the toy. Yeah, perfect. If they're not engaged, it's not a toy. It's not a toy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very reinforcing. Yeah. Um, and then these, you have a couple others. Um, we haven't used these ones a whole lot. This is the Snoop, and it'd be the same same idea as these ones, but a little easier. You can pour the kibble in there, um, and then the, as your dog kind of throws it around, we'll have some videos showing the dogs using it. It'll come out, and if you want to make it harder, you can stick a little ball in there. Or a Kong. Or a Kong, yeah, that was kind of cool. We were playing with that this <laughs> morning. <laughs> same idea, your dog has to kind of pull it apart to, to do that, and um, yeah. Yeah, so these are more stationary. These are more motion yeah. food feeders. Your dog's going to kind of push them around the living room. Yeah, or empty. roll them up and <laughs> toss them everywhere, <laughs> depending on what kind of dog you have. Yeah. Um, yeah, this probably wouldn't be the best suited for in a kennel. Um, this doesn't have the motion if you feed them in the kennel, and then these, they'll probably chew apart. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're getting a toy that is suitable for the situation that you're going to utilize it in. Yep. So this would be good as a stationary thing. This probably not. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. okay, so this moves us into the more specialty toys, some of the puzzles. Do you want to walk us through when you might use one of these? Sure. So these are more for the brain than to slow your dog down or distract, distract them. them. So these are puzzle toys. They're great for keeping your dog busy and fighting that boredom. There's different levels. So we have a level one, which is a, it's kind of a treat ball like these ones that yeah. we just went through. Uh, you toss the treats in, and actually this would probably be more of the motion one opposed to these ones, um, but this is on the easier end. So you put the treats in, with the dog in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> but Chloe wanted to be part of the video. Yes. 
<laughs> um, so this one does not twist. It's a treat dropping one, so you have to drop the treats in. So the hole is quite small, so small kibble would probably be better than for a larger dog. I yeah. believe this is the small size. I think it is the small size. Um, so small kibbles or small treats would be good for this. And then your dog would push it around with their nose. So I guess technically it's part of that side. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say this is the easier one. So, thank you. So this is a good one for if your dog just had surgery or if your dog is be a senior that's kind of less mobility, less mobility back issues, you don't want to play too hard with them. Yeah, something that they should stay in home, or I use these a lot if it's really cold outside and I want my dog, I don't want to go outside, yep. I don't want to <laughs> walk my dog, so instead I will get something like this together, it takes some um, between a couple minutes or up to 30 minutes depending on the toy. The difficulty level and how used to your dog is to playing with them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so for this one, you stick treats in each of the little compartments, and then they can pull it off, you can stick treats in there, and they have to pull the lever to open this one. We'll have a video of how to use it later. Perfect. Um, but this is kind of a level one toy. So really good if this is like your first puzzle, your dog's just learning how to play yes. these games. Okay. Yeah, so if your dog is new to using their brain, I yes. guess. In this kind of in way, this way? Yeah. Uh, this would be a good start. You don't want to go straight to level three to an advanced one because they'll give up. Uh, these are quite difficult. And if your dog, once again with these, if the rate of reinforcement and they can't figure it out, it's not a toy. It's going to become frustration and they'll shut down and not use it. Cool. Yeah. So this one? Uh, level two okay. is this one over okay. here. So this is the dog hide and slide. There's seven areas where you can stick some treats. You slide this, put the treats in, close it, and then your dog has to move that in order to squibble that and get the food so inside. So like two steps to get all the treats in. Yeah, awesome. so depending on the puzzle, it goes from like kind of a one step, two step, okay. and three step. This one's way more difficult, you'll see. Okay. I can't even figure <laughs> out half the time. Yeah. Um, but these would be really good, I think they have they have foot stoppers, so you can throw them in your kennel. Make and sure that you're supervising your dog. Uh, but yeah, it keeps it from sliding it around. It's good to get your dog calm instead of running around high energy. These are very calming interactive toys. Yeah. So you throw this in your kennel, let your dog sniff through, and then take it away immediately after. Yeah. And then our last one. So this is the dog twister. Each of these have kibble in it, so be careful when okay. you start opening it. <laughs> um, your dog has to pull the tab okay. of both to slide it over, okay. and then they can eat it. Okay. And then they've got to pull the tab, slide it over to eat it. Um, if your dog gets frustrated, like my Amstaff did on this, she would just pick it up and throw it everywhere. Throw the toy, yeah. Um, so you want to make sure that you get an appropriate level for your dog. Which we haven't talked about, but you also see it sometimes with these. Yeah. So, so feeders, so. Yeah, so we'll get okay. to that in a second. <laughs> um, I'm going to run off camera here a second and grab the uh, snuffle mat. Okay. <laughs> okay, one thing while we were on that topic I wanted to talk about was kind of snuffle mat. This is a snuffle ball, so same idea. Uh, another calming toy if used in a kennel or could be a more interactive toy, um, like this ball is. They can roll it around to get food out. Yeah. And with snuffle mats, so this is a, I whipped this up yesterday. This is a do-it-yourself toy. What it originally looked like is this guy here. So it's just a ball. You can use these and put treats in it by itself, but I wanted to make it more difficult. So I threw some fleece on it. And depending on how your dog reacts to something like this, my dogs have actually been playing with it without food in it. They yeah. just love to toy colors and fun. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, so you can use it as a regular toy, yeah. or you can throw food in it. So right here we have a hole. I'm not sure if you can see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we'll but you can, yeah, you can put some kibble, or once again, you can put dried treats in there as well. And the dog can roll it around or kind of toss it around if it's in their, yeah. in their kennel. And for more snuffle mat style, you put it on the outside, put your treats in, and then... 
So for this one, I don't do okay. it that way. Yeah. I just throw it in there, it and up. depending on the difficulty, I have a couple of these that are open. Okay, so, so they just fall out. Yeah, so okay. as I roll it around, the treats will fall out. Right. And to make it more difficult, you can put more fleece around it, okay. so that they only have a couple holes to come out of. Yep. Or you can even kind of stuff Ooh, some of that tricky, piece tricky. in, <laughs> so that they really got to throw it around. Yeah. This toy I would not leave unsupervised, okay. though. So these ones, these ones, are more dog is unsupervised, yep. but you're home. Yep. Supervised, unsupervised. Yep. Whereas this, I wouldn't want the dogs eating the fleece. Right. So this one I would probably use more if I'm watching a movie yeah. and I want the dog to be quiet. <laughs> one nice thing I do like about this, because it's got so much fleece on it, even the, the holy roller isn't very noisy, if you're in an apartment, or maybe have nicer furniture and don't want the dogs to wreck it, this is nice yes. and soft. So yeah. it's gonna bounce off your antique dining room <laughs> table without, instead of without putting any dents in. in it. So that's really nice. Yeah, so that is another option. And then we, as Megan was mentioning, we have a snuffle mat. Uh, a snuffle mat is just a flat piece of rubber, generally, with the fleece Same hanging out, just like this and you throw the treats on top and the dog has to snuffle through them. So the so benefits- you kind of flip them like this to try yeah. and get the treat underneath or. And the benefits of these is, I guess for all of these toys, is a dog, we generally have done a disservice to dogs by feeding them out of the dog bowl. What these toys kind of help with is puts in the enrichment, makes them use their brain and makes them start to scavenge. Whereas if dogs in the wild or on the desert, that's what they do all day. They're searching for food, they're scavenging, yeah. Yeah. and they're looking. And Plus so many of us work all the time that, you know, eight hours a day to yeah. fill. You know, if this takes half an hour or an hour for them to empty, it gives them something to... Gives them something to do yeah. and lets us catch up on our everyday chores. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard for us to come home, train our dogs for an hour, hang out with our dogs after walking, make dinner, yeah. take care of the kids. Do the laundry. <laughs> yeah, do all our chores and have an actual balanced life for our dogs. Yeah. So this helps kind of supplement that in a way that we can have the dogs use their brain while we're gone, they can sleep during the day, be calm. When they get home, they can also... I guess good too if you have a puppy or do rescue. Um, you said you just get home from work, you don't want to put them right back in a kennel or play pen again. Yeah. Is you, you know, you feel a little guilty if they've been locked up, so they can still be out around the house with one of these. Exactly. We don't feel so guilty. <laughs> yeah, and it it helps us out too because yeah. we don't want to train our dog all the time. Some yeah. of us do have the time for that, not all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us like to watch TV too. <laughs> yeah, we need our downtime after yeah. our work schedule, so yeah. this helps us out. Okay. So I think the last thing then on the table, if we're good, yeah, is the slow feeders. The pure yeah. slow feeders? So the slow feeders, as I was saying with the dog bowls, this one. so we have two different sizes. Yeah. Um, so a lot of dogs, if you do feed out of a bowl, dogs will finish their bowl in about 30 seconds. You yeah. put it down, it's gone. Yeah. This helps slow down your dog by about, I think it's 10 times, they say. Okay. So you sprinkle the food in, you give it to your dog. I even sometimes put some water or broth in here right. as well, yep. just to really slow them down. And I saw something the other day, someone had put wet food in and froze, froze it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, so that's you can be creative. creative. Yep. Be creative. <laughs> uh, yeah, you put your food in, it helps slow the dog down, it helps with their digestion, and it makes it so that their food goes a little bit further. Yep. So they're not just scarfing it down as quick as possible. And if you have a dog that's prone to bloat, this can be really, or a breed that's prone to bloat, this yep. can be really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of along the do-it-yourself, I don't know if Carly will get, get to it, but um, I've heard other people, well, the snuffle mat we've talked about already, um, but, you know, even just throwing kibble on the carpet yeah. um, in the grass in the summer. Yes. Uh, lots of other options if you don't want to buy a, slow, a special yeah. bowl. Or, um, some, some dogs, too, get really either excited or frustrated with this and will actually mm -hmm. just throw the bowl. Yes. So if you have a dog that's like that, maybe just the throwing kibble on the floor yeah. idea might be another way to slow them down. So when I am on my way out of the house and I don't have anything like this prepared, that's what I do. I get a bowl, I just throw it everywhere. It 
takes them about, depending on how I threw it. How many dogs? <laughs> yeah, it might be under the couch or yeah. under the some chairs and stuff. So they've got to snuffle yeah. and find it. Yeah. They have to scavenge for it. And sometimes I come home and there is some food left. So that is one option. <laughs> and then in the summer, I love putting the food out into the grass. That is yeah. a phenomenal idea. And it's a cheap way. You don't have yeah. to make your own snuffle mat. You yeah. have your grass, you yeah. toss it on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just be careful with things like both inside the house and out. I always tell my clients this. You don't want mice. I don't want to be responsible for yeah. your mice. <laughs> so rather... And chemicals too, I suppose. If you fertilize yeah. your grass, things like that, yeah. to be careful about. So there are some things you do have to think about. I personally, I don't fertilize, so I don't have to yeah. worry about that. But at my parents' house, they do. So okay. I cannot go down yeah. that route. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to the snuffle mat and kind of how we, you can make one of these at home, or I guess this is a snuffle ball. Yeah. <laughs> how to make the snuffle ball at home. So like I said, this is what it looked like beforehand. This is just a holy roller. Yeah. Is that anything? Yep. Yeah. There's a um, few different shapes. I think some are like football, some are like dog bones. The ball, it sounds like, might work best for this. Yeah, so I guess it all kind of depends for the dog bone one. You could technically yeah, still do it. Yeah. Yeah, they would change the difficulty because they would get stuck up in the corners and everything. Yeah. Same as the, same as the football. football. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is what the holy roller looks like. And then if you get some fleece, I would get the no pill fleece from the fabric store. Yeah. The reason that I like no pill is it doesn't pill. So if your dog is playing with this a lot or you utilize it a lot, you'll get a little little balls on it. Okay. And it just takes away that potential for ingestion. Right. So I get the no pill. It's about 10 inches long. Cut it, put it through. So it's holding like that and you just tie it regularly. Um, now to change the difficulty up, you can go one per. Okay. Or this one, I have some that's just one per, some that are three or four. I wish I could show you guys. Um, so if you were just starting a dog, maybe do one per like whole total, or you'd do like one per side of the hexagon? I would do one per side of the hexagon. Okay. Um, and then leaving a few empty for the whole, to yeah. drop the kid down. Yeah, okay. so depending on the difficulty, you can have a couple of these empty. There's different sizes, so there's about an inch and a half or one inch. So you can leave the inch and a half ones if you want it more challenging, um, more easier, easier. And then for a ch more of a challenge, you can have the one inch. Okay. So you can choose, depending on your dog, where you want. Yeah. So pretty, I'll say, inexpensive way to keep your dog busy and you can make it yeah. easier or harder as your dog needs. So yeah, this is about, I think these run for about $10. And there's different sizes. You can get a giant ball or a small ball, so depending on your dog. Um, these run about $10. And I think there's about 6 $7 worth of fleece on here. So it took a lot of fleece, a lot more than I thought it. Okay. Uh, I yeah. kept running out. As you can see, it's a bunch of different colors. I had to keep going up and cutting more fleece yep. off. <laughs> um, but for a $17 toy, this can be used with food or without food. Yeah. So my dogs like to tug with it, throw it around, play with it. Or if I put food in it, they can roll it around. And there's been some... Yeah, there's, I have some freeze-dried liver in here okay. that they've been trying to get out. Yeah. <laughs> and it, they've been playing with it for about two hours. And there's um, still something. So. Yeah. But with the different colors, it is visually please, appeasing to your dog. Yeah. Um, and the textures. Yeah. And with different lengths, just by happenstance, too. So yeah. some are a little easier to grab on, too. Some exactly. Yeah. So some are really short. So over here, you can see I have... A bunch of really tight short ones yeah um but there's a nice and easy hole but and then there's some of these longer ones oh came excellent out. so that's how <laughs> it easy works. it can be uh and some of these longer ones with play they'll get stuck in the holes so right. it'll be harder for them to come out yeah awesome um so we have the snuffle ball next is a toilet paper roll yep so everybody's got those around the house everyone has <laughs> these around the house no excuses so for this one i just folded the edges and there's a couple kibbles inside, and you can give this to your dog. 
and let them tear it apart. So if you don't want your dog tearing the paper tables, apart, yeah. maybe don't give them this one. But my dogs think this is a great option. And like you said, everybody has these. Yep. So when I have something to do like cooking dinner, yep. I'll make a couple of these as possible. Yeah, sure. yeah, and we talked before we did the video, um, like water bottles work the same way, you can poke holes in them, yeah. have kibble, maybe not as safe as some of the Kong options, but um, it's a good easy to do it yourself. Yeah. yeah, it's a good cheap option. I personally, I just get a funnel, fill it with yeah. fill it with kibble, and I let my dogs have it. I don't cut holes. Okay. I don't yeah. I don't make it difficult for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have time for that. Yeah. So yeah, I just put kibble in it, give it to my dogs. I find personally my dogs do not eat the plastic, okay. but they will rip it over. Yeah, I know mine just love the crunch. So Yeah, so yeah. depending on your dog, obviously if your dog has pika and eats everything and ingests yeah. everything, yeah. maybe not the best option. Yeah. Um, but if your dog just likes the crunch or yeah. the sound or the feeling, that could be a good yeah. option for you. And the paper kind of, like again, mm -hmm. with ingestion, paper yes. roll, you don't have to worry a whole lot about. Yeah, so, so I don't know. Behaviorally, you might not like it if they tend yeah. to take out the toilet paper roll, but not a lot of risk there. Yeah, lower risk than yeah. water bottles. Yeah. Uh, our next option we have is a muffin tin. Okay, so the next option of a easy do-it-yourself is a muffin tin. So what you do is you get some kibble, and you can kind of spread it around. And depending on the difficulty, you can leave some pieces up or you can cover them. And then we get balls and we cover each of the holes. So you can choose which ones you want covered and which ones you don't. And your dog is going to have to pick it up and eat the kibble. So you can have some freebies like these ones because we ran out of balls. Oh, never mind. No, we didn't. <laughs> Um, yeah, so your dog can get the freebie, understand that, hey, there's something there, and then they can sniff through all of these and then start lifting them. We'll have a video of different variety of dogs trying to figure it out, just so that you guys can see how that okay, works. Okay, so, here is some of the openings for the snuffle ball. So, like I was saying, with the longer, you can kind of stuff these in, or they'll do it by themselves. Right. And it can make it harder for the treats to come out. And then some of these have holes in them, so treats will come out of those areas as well. So it's up to you on the difficulty. If you look, you can't really look inside anymore, <laughs> um, but when I was making it, I was checking for holes in and around to see the difficulty of the toy. If there's more holes, obviously the difficulty is a lot lower. Okay, so the next thing Carly's going to walk us through is a few different types of chew options that are available to our dogs. Mm -hmm. So we have two different types. We have kind of man-made nylon chews, and then we have natural chews. So let's start with the nylon chews. So this is a Benny Bone. This is a chicken flavor. It comes in chicken, I think peanut butter, bacon, bacon, stick one even, the maple stick. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so very Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so these are made in the U.S., which a lot of people do take comfort in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is actually my dog's favorite flavor. I, like, I've tried a million different uh, nylon toys, and this is their absolute favorite. Favorite. It's like a fight over who gets this one. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the only dog in my house that cares about it is my Aussie. He does love it, but a lot of people are against dogs chewing on nylon, yep. um, which is understandable. And then, so this is a quite durable, it doesn't bend or anything, nope. this is very yes. sturdy. And then for puppies or, once again, senior or small dogs, you can use uh, this nylon ball. Yeah. And this is very flexible. Yeah. So. I guess one thing with both of them we should mention is, um, I'll say nylon bone, but their recommendation is if your dog is taking out more than, like they're chewing, and they take off a chunk that's more than about the size of a grain of rice or um, uh, barley, um, you know, maybe not the best option for them. I know my dogs are three and eight now, and they'll pull off like a dime sized piece of this uh, softer yeah. rubber, and this one does come off properly. So yeah. um, 
if you're finding they're taking a piece that's too big, uh, maybe bump them up to the next level of difficulty or hardness. Yeah, yeah. So very good point. Yeah. So um, that takes us to the natural shoes then? Yeah, so for the natural shoes, you have a ton of options depending on your dog. So right here, we only have the two. We have a bully stick and we have a trachea. Both are beef. You can get lamb, you can get pork. Um, I'm sure you could get goat or something. Like that. So what would be the difference if I'm looking at a beef trachea versus like a goat or a lamb or something like that? So that would be different proteins. So depending on your dog's uh, like allergy issues, that would be yeah, intolerances yeah. or sensitivities, you'd want to go for a protein that is suitable for your dog. Right. Uh, I am fortunate. I have no allergies in my household, so <laughs> so I can go for the cheaper options. Yep. Um, but there are different things available. So there is goat. There is lamb. There is much any animal I or, guess you can think of. Yeah, there. if there's an animal we have. A <laughs> we have a trachea. <laughs> we, we have a trachea for it. Um, the thing I like about tracheas, so them alone, they're a very simple treat. They're, they're not soft, but you can chew them very easily. Okay. Uh, I personally don't eat them like this, so this is a hollow one at the moment. I like to stuff them. Okay. So this is like a natural version of a Kong. So we stuff a Kong, we can also stuff a trachea. So if you're worried about chipped teeth and things like that related to a normal, like a solid bone, heavier bone, this would be a safer option? Yeah, so instead of feeding like a, a marrow bone, a marrow bone, you could feed a trachea. Okay, that's so soft enough, you're not chipping yeah, teeth. Yeah, and the dog can eat the whole thing. The right. thing with marrow bones is generally they're a weight-bearing bone. Yeah which means that it's holding up a 2,000 plus pound animal. <laughs> Teeth can chip very easily. Yeah. Uh, that's why I would go more with a Kong or a trachea. A trachea. These okay. are a little on the oilier side though. So maybe keep that in mind if you have expensive rugs. Keep them off the carpet, carpet or good for the beds. kennels. Yeah, this is maybe- Hardwood floors. <laughs> yeah, this is maybe a kennel okay. type treat. Whereas the tendons or the bully sticks could be more wherever. Okay. Uh, I personally feed, I have these out at all times. The bully sticks are a little higher value. If I'm not home, I do not let my dogs have them just because they might get into a squat over it. Right. So I think you're saying uh, if you have guests over or something like that, want your dog in their kennel, this is again high value, yeah. easy to throw in their kennel. Exactly. These are good treats for high distraction situations. So this would be a good good alternative to throwing in the kennel when you have guests over. These, depending on your dog, once again, might not work as well. Yeah, it's not, so, not quite as interesting. Yeah, like, like it. dogs might love them, but in a situation where it's a high distraction yeah. or excitement, yeah. we want to go for something Usually that's you have to bump value. up the yeah. treat value a little bit. And so when you say these are similar to the con, you stuff them with the same sort of way? Yeah, so you can get them. creative with this as well. Uh, for something like this, so I feed raw a lot of the time. So I would put maybe... Just a breakfast or yeah, dinner in. Put some ground beef, um, yogurt, whatever in here. Uh, I also put chicken feed in, okay. just as an added little crunch and fun. Yep. And then I would freeze these okay. to make sure that they're not leaking out or oozing out. And so it's something you could do like six or eight of them ahead of time, throw them in the yeah. freezer, and then they're ready to go win. Yeah, so I buy these in a pack of, I think I buy 12 at a time. Okay. So I have two sizes. I have a larger size for my large dogs, and then I have a small size for my Chihuahua Shih Tzu. I fill them all up, put them in the freezer, they're easy peasy for yeah. when I need them. Yeah. And it's unexpected guests, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's easy to pull out. guests, <laughs> or somebody at the door, Yeah. or I need a break. Yeah. I had a stressful <laughs> day, I need my dogs to leave me alone. Yeah. That's when I fill these. Perfect. Or give these out. And it's the same with the Kongs. Yeah. Uh, as you said, we're going to have a recipe filling yeah. video later. Yeah. But for the Kongs, I usually I'll get a ton of food, fill them all up, put okay. them in the freezer okay, so that they're available. Or if the boyfriend calls and says, these dogs are driving me bonkers, help. Yeah. They can say, <laughs> go to the freezer, we have something. Yeah. To, out there. to occupy them for a little bit, give you time.
Yeah, so that's it with the chews. What would you like to do now? I think we've covered everything for today. Excellent, okay. So thank you for joining us both. Uh, if you'd like to talk to Carly, again, check out for Dog Safe YYC. Um, is that your website? Yeah, so for Dog Safe YYC is my website. Facebook? Facebook and Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Um, check out Carly, certainly lots of uh, wonderful information and she also teaches classes at Hightails Pet Resort. Mm -hmm. So you can check her out there as well. Um, thank you for joining us. Hope you got something out of this. Yeah. Uh, we really had fun making it and, uh, and hope we've helped you out a little bit with your dog, giving you a little bit of a, I'll say stress relief if you're going off to work or, or just need a few moments sanity. Um, hope you've enjoyed it and we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Bye. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>